a complete package. I have been lurking here for a few weeks and I must say I am impressed with how helpful and supportive this community is. I need your advice. I will get right into the stats. Empty nesters married for 15 years. I am 55, my lovely bride is 50. We both have successful and good paying careers, more on this in a minute. This is my second marriage, the first one ended after two very public and humiliating affairs by my EW. Both affairs were with a guy who worked for me at the same company. The EW also worked at the same company. My current wife has never been married. We are both in very good physical condition and we share all of the same interests such as travel, hiking, healthy eating and cycling. When we are not working, it's us against the world, we are together all of the time. The only thing missing in our relationship is regular intimacy, over the past five or six years bonding has happened less often, currently probably only four or five times a year. We still have hand holding, hugs and a kiss before and after work. We both have acknowledged to each other that we need to do more to improve our intimacy. Not too bad so far, right? But then comes the guy I will call Jack a dollar sign dollar sign. Six months ago, Jack was hired at my wife's company. My wife is a director and Jack reports to her. Jack is in his mid-thirties and is a single dad of two kids. Jack and engaged to be married in a few months to a single mother with a few kids. Brady Bunch, while updating my wife's iPad, it's linked to her work phone, I notice that while conducting normal business, Jack has a habit of sending the occasional inappropriate text page or meme via a group text page to his peers and my wife. He will occasionally send something to my wife only that is inappropriate. Here are a few examples. Wife equals W, J equals Jack. Text page discussion with W only. W, don't forget you are training Jennifer in the morning. J, if she X me it's your fault. W, haha. J, your eye candy. Pretty much everyone else is. W, no response. Text page discussion with W only. J, is the applicant that guy in room B. W, haha, yes. J, okay, good. You're still my side chick and he can't have you. W, haha. J, I wasn't joking. W, no response. Text page discussion with W only. W, she screwed up the paperwork. You need to speak with your girlfriend again. J, not my girlfriend, too much vagina for me. W, once you lift the rolls out of the way, it might not be too bad. W, what should we call her, your sugar mama? J, I tried to make you my sugar mama but you keep turning me down. Figured I'd go for the cow, she can't say no. Text page discussion with W only. J, someday I'm going to start a band and sing songs about this company. W, haha, Becky and I will come to see that show. J, oh, hell yes, groupies. J, you all going to flash me, right? J, that was a serious question. J, private show for Becky and, W's name, at my house. No clothes allowed. J, either you all are coming or not. I know I will. W, haha, were you able to fix the schedule for inbound? End of texts. I have been monitoring her text daily. The texts I have shared here are the worst of her responses. In reviewing over three months of text pages, everything else from her has been all business. A very high percentage of the text communication to and from Jack were during my wife's normal working hours. Her phone call history does not have any red flags at all. Calls to from Jack are very short and are all during my wife's normal working hours. No chance my wife has another phone. I'm 100% sure on this. I have full access to her iPad and phone and she makes no effort to prevent me from using them. Other than FB and Instagram she has no other social media or chats. She is friends with Jack on FB but she has not interacted with him at all. Jack's FB page is 100% his kids, fiancé and his hobbies. Just in case, I did capture the fiancé's name and FB page. By the way, the fiancé is a stunningly beautiful young woman. I'm at a loss on how to proceed. I don't know what to make of all of this. I never show it but ever since the EW's affairs, I know I am paranoid of cheaters and this is eating me up inside. I have experience as a company human resources leader and I know how fatal this could be for my wife's career. From a professional standpoint her not stopping Jack's behavior is going to cost her job someday. As soon as one of the other women complains to HR or files a charge, my wife is toast. But I am most concerned that this could be an E or could become an EA. I love my wife with all of my heart and I don't know what to do or how to move forward. Just to clarify, over the past 6 to 12 months, my wife and I both had acknowledged that we needed to work on our intimacy. And we have made progress. The current trend is headed in the right direction. I know Jack must be stopped for many reasons. Figuring out the best approach has me very conflicted. I don't want to ruin trust with my wife. I want a hard stop on any possibility of a future E or worse. And at the same time, if possible, I want to help my wife clean up this mess professionally. She has worked very hard to reach her current success and I don't want to see her blow it. One plan I have started thinking about, purchase a cheap prepaid burner phone and anonymously text page details of Jack's behavior to the HR director at my wife's company. I have the HR director's personal cell number. If it comes down to it, I will gladly blow up my wife's career to keep this predator out of my marriage. The more I think about it, the more it seems like it will come down to this. My comment.
Either your wife let him get too far because she really wanted to avoid conflict or she was not confident in how to handle this. I'm ignoring what others have already said. Today, the good old boy network performance still shows its ignorance at times. I know a few females who enjoy that kind of coarse attention. Your wife will eventually lose her job if she does not handle this. She will also eventually discover what you know. You are the one with everything to lose and you must make a decision that is quite difficult. OP responds, should I confront her? Confront, from your perspective, what would be the best approach? Do not confront, from your perspective, what should be my next steps? My priorities are, protect my marriage so we can continue to improve it. A hard stop on any possibility of a future EA if possible. I want to help my wife clean up this mess professionally. Update. Yesterday my wife and I went for our regular Saturday morning 30 mile bike ride and at our favorite place to stop and relax for a few minutes, I confronted her. Using some of the advice given here, I said, I love you and I want our marriage to be strong and thriving. I am 100% committed to you. I have been working to do my part to help improve our relationship and to be the husband of your dreams. A few weeks ago, I became concerned about something and I want to talk about it. While running update and backup on your iPad, a text page popped up that no married person could possibly ignore. I have respected your privacy, I lied, and I did not go through all of your text pages. But I did see enough to know that Jack has sent you at least a few texts that have an undercurrent of flirting and others are extremely inappropriate considering you are married and you are his boss. I also saw that you had not reciprocated, thank you. I'm just having a difficult time wrapping my head around this, I will not let this become a wall between us, or for this to destroy the career you have worked so hard to build. Will you help me understand what's going on? This really caught her off guard, she gathered herself and told me she would never even think of cheating on me and there is nothing going on with Jack and there never would be. She went on to give me a very specific reason why she would never be attracted to Jack. I won't share the reason she gave, too specific to share on an open forum, but it's very safe to say Jack is not my wife's type, and he never will be. She went on to tell me that a few months after Jack was hired his behavior slowly started to change and it became more inappropriate by the day. She told me she knew she needed to stop him because he was out of control now. She also told me she was very uncomfortable and a little afraid to deal with him at this point. Her company is privately held and lacks a strong HR presence, and the owners have a habit of allowing inappropriate behavior. She told me she also was committed to improving our relationship and intimacy. I told her that she either resigns, she can get a job anywhere she graduated school of business, or she stops Jack in his tracks. She committed to stopping Jack behavior and she would think about looking for another job. She asked me to help her put together a plan on how to address Jack. We are working on that now. Overall, I feel 100% better about the situation. As soon as Jack is stopped or fired, I will feel even better. Update. Things are going pretty well. We are making some progress on the physical part of our relationship. Jack was issued a final warning and was informed that his behavior had to stop. He was transferred to third shift at a different facility. Since then, text pages have been all business. My comment. So, Jack may now be towing the line, and your wife, but you still need to talk with her as to why she found this attention so attractive and why she put up with it. She needs to work on that and have appropriate boundaries for your marriage. She needs to defend it independently of you telling her to. If she doesn't, stuff like this may creep up again. Story 2. I took a beating back then for many were saying to do 180 and stuff. I refused and we found our love again. She just could never get over the lost feeling or is there life out there feeling. Either way I am allowing her to leave after 29 years. I am 53 she is 46. Boys are out and living their lives. She still loves me, but her feelings are just too much. Enough on that. My issue is finding myself kind of like W is doing. I am at age 53 and alone. I have had someone to take care of for 17 years old and now it is myself and two cats. I live in a small town of 40,000. I don't do well in crowds like large churches although I am a Christian. Anyway I will post more later. I just had to say something to someone. It is lonely when you are trying to do what's right sometimes. But whatever, she will move out in four weeks so I am trying to do this as nicely as possible for we do want to be friends since we have kids and grandkids. So, I made a mistake. I am sure you have made a few yourself in your relationships. This time is different. Rings are off, dividing stuff and such. The part of saying being friends, I meant in the sense of being sociable when we see each other instead of hateful. I have proven my love to her over the years. If she does decide to come back, she will have to prove she is over this thing she says she has. I don't know how she will do that, but I don't want to be hurt anymore. She says she hates hurting me over and over with her actions of separation. This is the fifth attempt. She gets this way and talks about it, but does not leave except two times before. Once was my fault for sure from verbal abuse in 2000. Last one was 2013 and it was her fault. She truly has never been alone in life. She moved from parents to me and is very independent. Her statements are basically that she needs to see if she can live her life on her own. She blames herself for being broken and feeling this way. I just need to find myself as well so she can't hurt me anymore. 
I am having trouble allowing myself to do the things that make me happy. I don't know where to start to overcome this feeling. It will be hard to do the 180 until she leaves. We are still dividing stuff up and the kids, grandkids are around quite a bit. Once she moves it will be easier. Once tax season is over, I will be joining a gym with my youngest son. He and his wife and two kids are moving into the house with me so I can keep it for now once the W leaves. I don't want to fix her. She must find that. I do want to fix myself though. I have close relationships with my boys and their wives. I am sure we will start what you suggested. I am hard of hearing so groups make it hard for me to truly enjoy them if too many are talking. I will be headed back to church once tax season is over. She never cheated but developed emotional affairs easily with both males and females who had problems. She loves to be the fixer, I guess. I still do not think it is an affair. Bonding was never a big deal for her. Romance maybe, but it was usually unrealistic crap that came about after Fifty Shades was released. I do believe it is a midlife crisis of feeling old and wondering what she may have missed from her youth. As a strong Christian lady this is the furthest, she has taken things. She removed her wedding rings a few days ago and I noticed today. She says she did not do it in the past and this time she feels she must do it all this time or she will quit the separation maneuver early like last time. Totally not the woman I have known for 30 years, going against all her own beliefs as well as Christian beliefs. It's tough to wrap your mind around not knowing a person you thought you knew after 30 years together. I will remove my ring soon. It is just hard for me to get there right now. We are all business now after arguing quite a bit today. This is not even the woman I knew a mere two months ago. Yesterday was a tough day between the small arguing moments. I took the ring off today. That was hard. Is the marriage over? Yes. Right now, I feel weird because I go from anxiety moments of being scared, lost, to being alright about it. I realized last night I was not all that happy with her. I was happy with the being a married man. I don't want someone who does not want to be with me. Going to be a long four weeks before she leaves the house. Last night I came to terms with her lost faith and how she has abused me. I truly thank you for the Christian verses. I forgot these. I do feel I gave all I could to the marriage and to her. Knowing she has quit the relationship months before even saying anything and getting me to pay off her student loans, nursing, on my credit cards, paying 2000 out of my business account has made me able to say see you. I would agree that my separation issues led me to accept her leaving routine for over 25 years and blame myself. No, I have never had any counseling or am on meds. I hate doctors and meds. I think now that I am more aware than ever before, I can seek help. I am messed up mentally in a small way after my childhood and 22 years in army with 5 tours. Army crap is nothing that makes me want to hurt people, just nightmares. I am very aware I could get addicted to drugs easily so I stay away from any that I can and restrict my alcohol intake. As far as her cheating, besides her emotional affairs I have never seen any indications of actual physical affair with a man. A woman is more likely. I have even told my sons that if being gay is hereditary, this would make me believe it. Her mother went gay after three marriages and has been happy ever since. She was 38 when that happened. My wife is 46 and this is what I truly expect to happen. I agree that she may come back. I think my sons would stop me from getting back with her. They are extremely disappointed in her and feel she should move on. Like I stated several times before, I wish nothing bad on her. I hope she finds what makes her happy, but I must come first. That is hard for me for I have always put my family ahead of me in everything. Her friends are always telling her they are jealous and wish their man was like me. I do hope to find a woman to love again for I am a good man who has a loving heart but I must love myself first. I can honestly say I am not sure I want to rekindle the relationship after I have spent over a week reminiscing the good and bad. The past 30 years, well 25, have always been wondering when she was going to leave after the first time. Like I mentioned before she has always talked about separation or divorce off and on throughout our marriage. I just kept us together and lived in my fantasy world thinking all was well. Then surprised, not this time, when she wanted to leave. I deserve a relationship of complete love and trust or at the very least I deserve happiness by myself with never having to worry about being hurt by another woman. This 53-year-old heart has been mistreated way too much by women who took advantage of my love and gentleness. Sometimes we all need a kick in the back to wake up and see things as they really are. We had good times and bad times. I am grateful she was there with me as we dealt with my son's prison issue. We had two great boys together. We also fell out of love during the years of stress and our careers got in the way. That is life and it is time to move on. Many of her friends who have gone through something similar, according to them, are telling her she will have fun at first then find out that she was wrong and want me back. She told me this last night as we were going through pictures. I said, and what do you think of that situation? She replied she expected me to laugh and walk away, but she hopes it never comes to that. I told her I would never laugh at her, but that is all I promise. I will most definitely do the praying after she is gone. I am also looking at a divorce, separation group here in my city once tax season slows down for me. Today has been extra hard for it seems everything I see and hear reminds me of our good years. That is hard. 
Yesterday was a very hard day as W and I had to sort through 30 years of pictures and keepsakes. We argued over money and what she wanted to take or for me to buy her. She was left speechless when I asked her who was going to help me when I eventually moved. I went on and said you wanted this separation, not me. I don't owe you a thing, but I will help you to a point. You have no right to ask me for more than I am willing to help. I just wish these next three weeks would move along quicker. How she thinks it is all about her. Hell, I may have been part of the reason she thinks that way. I sure treated her as the queen of the family, but she wanted it all evidently. It amazes me how love can blind one to such behavior. About treating the women well and not getting disrespected. I never saw it until about two months ago. I know there are other ladies who deserve my love and I know there are women who will love me and show that love better. After reading the five languages of love, I discovered big gaps. I love to do things and buy gifts. I love to receive praise and gifts. She rarely gave praise for my husband's actions. She would praise my business skills and such. Gifts were very rare and hardly thought out. Well, a week has gone by. Some arguing and some nice friendly talk during the short times we do talk. Twelve days until she moves out. I am eager for it but not as much as her. Today my truck broke down and needed a ride home. My boys were busy so I called her. She did not answer, but I assumed she was already gone to work. About 20 minutes later my youngest son did call me back and got me. On her 5 minutes mini break she texted me and apologized for not being there for me. She reassured me that she did not ignore my call, just couldn't answer it. I texted her back 15 minutes later that I never thought that and feel she would have answered if she could. Amazingly she called me from a business line an hour later to see if I got her text and apologized and restated the text. I replied back with what I told her in my text. We hung up on good terms. I do not think or expect this as a sign. I just took it as being nice to have my former best friend talking nice and apologizing for not being there for me in a sincere form. It is practically impossible to do a hard 180 when you still live together and have 31 years of stuff to split up, grandkids visiting and such. Going hard after she moves is the goal. So far, she talks with her friends on the phone but does not see them in person. I did ask her about that and she stated when I say alone it isn't just you, but everyone. She did remove her wedding ring a few weeks back and put on a different ring on her ring finger. She said she was not wanting guys to hit on her. I have had to do similar things with both boys over the past few years. Pretty much now it is assistance with large price items. I have been dealing anxiety today with me being codependent on my wife. I know I will get over it for I must, but I sure hope it isn't too long. These past few weeks I have come to see just how spoiled she was, rude, disrespectful in her actions with me, and some other things over our marriage. It is hard to face your own blindness and accept that you failed to protect yourself from being hurt. As for her seeing others and not staying alone, that is on her. She knows I will start dating as well. She is definitely afraid of that. She is afraid of other women taking me away and has verbally stated that. I will stay faithful as long as she does, but once it is broken, I am not bound by my vows. I have no interest in dating at this time because I am still in love with my wife. Her dating is just words from her. She just knows it is a deal breaker and will cause a divorce. I won't be spying. Many of her friends are my friends who are unhappy with her decision. I figure if she starts dating, I will hear about it. I have asked about MC and she said not at this time. I did tell her that if we got back together, MC would be a requirement. I fully expect her to come home at some point. Taking her back will be based on how I feel at that time as well as if she can gain my trust back. As the time has gone by, I am in a constant battle of wanting her and seeing how marriage or truly was after seeing things in a different light. This makes me not want to be treated that way again. These battles over my feelings are bringing great stress and anxiety on me. Like I have stated, I know things will be different once she moves out next Saturday. We are not divorced yet. We are playing roommates until she can move next weekend. She has spoken of legal separation, but I have no clue if she is going through with that. Divorce was spoke off as an eventual situation, but over the past six weeks she has seemed to remove that from the discussion. She was expecting me to fight to keep her tied to me. That isn't the case and she has calmed down on the divorce talk. Today at breakfast we talked about the upcoming move, life insurance, etc. She stated that she is wanting to cut as much ties as possible for she feels if she doesn't it may make her feel still attached and not help her overcome this need for space feeling. All I said was I can't fathom what she is feeling, but it is her call. Just know I can't guarantee how long I will wait for her to come around. I am not in favor of this separation, but I am trying to work with her for the family's sake and our marriage. I know most don't understand why I am doing things this way, but when I pray, the answer is work with her and when I ask for a sign from God that I am on the right path, she says or does something that shows the love she still has. I truly feel God is working on me as much as her. One of my fears was if she could take care of herself once I am gone because she never had lived on her own. Who knows, maybe this separation is God's way of answering my concerns. I have no interest in dating right now. I do miss female companionship over dinner and such, but bonding is not desired at the moment. She says pretty much the same thing. We have talked about maybe down the road dating each other if we chose to. 
Like I have said before, love is there, but she just wants to be alone, not with anyone even dating. What I was saying if she started dating someone else, I would move for legal separation if not divorce. So far, she has only asked for a separation. I feel she has a mental issue and I don't know how to help her but give her the request and wait, see where it goes. This is where I can only trust God and pray. Heck, for all I know he may need to move her to work on me. As I have stated, I have always been concerned if she could make it on her own if I was to die. Maybe she secretly has the same fear and this is her own way of saying it. I do love my wife and have seen how she has been struggling to deal with this issue for several years. Maybe now is the time to let her try to solve her problem as I solve mine. I do not want a divorce yet. I am fine with the separation that is my decision. I still love the woman and I am trying to give her some time to possibly see she needs counseling and during that time I can work on my codependency issues. Hell, for all I know my codependency issues may be part of her problems. I am not a person who makes knee-jerk decisions. I do try to weigh out all scenarios. A divorce can be done later if needed, but for now I need her to get moved so I can start a hard 180 and begin fully working on myself. She will be on her own, can have her space, and can see what life is like when she is responsible for herself and no one's there to spoil her. So, we finally got fully separated, living-wise, last Saturday. Between tornado weather and family issues with kids we still see or talk with each other at least a little bit daily. I am back at work doing my tax business and I go get the dog and walk him while she is at work. All in all, I am doing well. I have now dropped below 293 pounds so 37 pounds lighter since March 1st. This weekend will be her first time of being at her home without a day of work and such. Right now, I just want to get on with my life, with her or without her. I have reduced my food intake, eating healthier and walking by myself or with our dog which she has. I usually walk the dog after she has gone to work so we don't see each other. I walk our dog because I love the dog. It is my third fur baby. It is having severe separation anxiety from me as well. She walks him on the days off she has. I walk him and care for him during the times she is at work and when bad weather happens. The dog is a five-year-old German shepherd who went from my big backyard to a small yard with no real room to run. This is very bad on a GSS hips and causes arthritis which usually causes the animal to be put down by age 8. I will not cause harm to my dog because of her BS. We don't have any communication over this part except during storms. I tell her I have him and when he goes home, as far as let new BF care for him. If this was one of my kids, I would not just let the BF take care of them. Anyway, there is nobody in the picture as of yet according to her friends or evidence. That does not mean there isn't one. She is also concerned of how I can destroy her in a divorce. She is already concerned about how her reputation has been hurt in our town. Like I stated before, only a handful of friends and people support her decision to do this. Today my wife contacted me to ask questions about our finances. I picked up on that she was doing legal separation paperwork. I stopped her and told her if she wanted any more details, she needed to meet me so I can verify what she is putting. Mistakes could cause issues and make this part or at worst the divorce a messy brutal and costly situation for both of us. We are not wanting lawyers involved and just keep it as simple as possible. She don't want to be with me. Go on your way and good luck. Divorce is still off the table for now by both of us. We met for exactly 13 minutes and got everything split as originally agreed upon and all financials in order. I have always handled the budget in the household and have all data on software that shows how every dime was spent. She can make all types of claims but I have all the proof when it comes to financials including how she tricked me into paying off her student loans on my credit card and spending over 7000 on car and vacation for her to go see her mom before I knew of her plans, but during the time she already knew she was leaving me. She is afraid she may have to pay alimony, although I don't want a dime from her. Now this is what kind of made me go what the heck. She literally asked me how I was doing. She said she was concerned about me. I do know she still loves me due to 30 years together and stuff but really, I am not reading anything into this, but just thought it was weird. Possibly just part of her midlife craziness. Tomorrow is Mother's Day and that is hard on me. This is the first time in my life since I was 10 that I am not buying a present of some sort for someone. My mother passed away in 1993 and we were married and had a kid in 1989. Our two remaining sons were born in 92 and 94. I have a copy of the paperwork. Yes, legal separation is handled just like a divorce here and okay. Luckily, she hates attorney fees as much as me. We already paid one attorney over 20000 to handle our son's BS charge. We both divided stuff up equally. I am an enrolled agent, tax professional, and she still wants me to do hers even if we split officially. She knows I am pure professionalism when it comes to keeping business and personal separate. All finances and assets are separated. This was handled while we were living together and during the first week after she moved out. No further credit impact by either party. The 180 is partially going on as I give her space. The counselor and I agree that doing a full 180 would drive her away into someone else's arms because she is needing that safety net as she deals with her issues. The 180 is good if the relationship is about affairs or irreparable. 
The C says I am doing well for myself and thinks it is helping W find herself by giving her the space without causing the crushing. Heck I even got an out of the blue hug from her yesterday morning after she stopped by to pay me back for buying stuff for her work. No words except sorry I'm Ikey, from sweat, she hugged and said she had to get to work. First hug or even physical act since the day she moved out. Not reading anything into it, but it will be curious over the next 10 days. I did ask if I could take her out for her birthday next weekend. Give her a chance to dress up and wear her fancy jewelry. She said she would think about it this weekend. We will see. Can't hurt to ask. I am down 55 pounds and walking every day for at least 25 minutes. Update. Today I got a call from the W that she was ready to do legal separation. At 1.15 p.m. I signed the papers. As we left the building she asked for hug if it would not hurt me. I gave her a hug and we both talked and were teary-eyed. She said she felt she needed to do this so I would move on. She stated she had not loved me for many years like I deserved and I deserve someone who would love me like that. She did say also that she isn't looking at a divorce nor dating other guys. I am no fool. I know this stuff can, will probably change. I am not mad. I am hurt for my loss, but I do feel some weight of my shoulders. Had a couple of mini breakdown moments away from her, but that is expected. Life goes on and I still leave this whole mess in God's hands. All I can control is me. Tomorrow will be four months since separation started and two months since we moved her out. This morning the W called to see how I was doing. She felt I was not doing well the last two times we talked. Son is divorcing his wife and will probably lose his kids. He was laid off from his job the same day. I told her I was fine about us. My emotions were about our youngest son's issues and my finances since I may have to support him for a bit. I told my counselor about this call a few minutes ago. She says this shows that the W still has deep feelings, love for me. Subconsciously, if not consciously, the W is thinking of me in a way that shows love. My comment, your hopium addiction is strong. She's not getting the chance to miss what she had because you are at her beck and call. This will work against you but I doubt you'll stop. Just like last time, you are like a kicked pup coming back for a pat on the head. But it is your problem. No one here can fix it for you. Your kids are grown, have separate residences. There is no reason to communicate. Let her make arrangements to walk the dog. Get your own dog.